What is up, guys? Thanks for joining another episode of Cars, Bikes, and Coffee. I am Kurt, and we are working on a 1973 Datsun 240Z. And today, we need to build a battery box. Now, what we've done is, up front, we redid the engine bay. If you haven't seen that, click the link above. And what we did is we moved the battery from here, or going to move it to the back. So in order to do that, we need to build an aluminum battery box. So let's get started. So the first step is to measure our battery. So we got our dimensions and the battery we're using right now is just a standard battery for down the road. If we go to a deep cycle or something different, they all are about the same size. So we'll take that into consideration for the box. Now, we drew up a little design, how we're gonna make it. We're gonna have some sides, some panels, and a lid, which will latch down. And we have also taken into consideration we're going to be putting in a circuit breaker and leave some room for some fuses uh, for accessories if needed. So the first thing we need to do is build the bottom. So we'll need to cut some sides, the bottom, and some uh, connecting pieces for the sides. And then we'll build the top, or the lid, after. Let's get going. So to do this we went to the metal shop and got a quarter sheet of the aluminum in 40 thousandths of an inch which is about a millimeter and then we're going to map out our pieces with a sharpie and a ruler and then we're going to cut them with an electric shear. So this will cut through this gauge really well and real easy and make nice flat cuts. And of course We've got our gloves and our eye protection. So now we have all of our pieces cut. We did not cut and thankfully we have enough uh, left to do the lid, but effectively these pieces, these four and these four pieces will become our sides, which we're going to use our metal brake to bend them. And if you haven't seen that video, check it out. And we're going to do a couple bends with this one. This one will bend as a corner, and then we also have to notch it. So this one will be um, kind of technical, but not super technical. Um, but we now have our sides and our top, or excuse me, our bottom. So these are our side pieces, and we're gonna use the metal brake to bend these at a 90 degree angle, and they will be the four corners. And so these are two inches wide, so we're gonna measure, obviously, dead center. Uh, about one inch and then fold these with the brake. So now that we have our side corners bent, we need to work on our top corners. And these pieces are going to go around uh, the top of the box. And so what we've done is made a template out of cardboard and cut a notch so that when we fold it over and then fold it again, we'll get a nice 90 degree corner. So now we're gonna use this and trace this onto our um, top pieces. And effectively we wanna do uh, the corner at eight inches and then the seam will be right at the center of the side. And now that we have our pieces all notched out and we marked them to be bottom and which ends go together and top. So that way we know where we want the bend to be. So in this case on the bottom, we're gonna bend it up and that way this will be hidden underneath. So now that we've made our main bend, we need to make the corner bends for the top and bottom pieces. And so what we did is we modified the metal brake with a smaller 
piece. And so what, what we need to do is this will go over. We can slide the end to bend this. But what we did is we drilled a hole in here, a hole over here, so for the other corners, and then made this smaller piece and then have a removable uh, bolt. And that simply locks in place. Then we have the washer and the wing nut, and then we can make those bends. So now that we have all of our pieces cut and bent where we need them and ready to go for assembly, we need to go ahead and drill some holes for the rivets. We're gonna be doing that on the top and the sides and also the corner pieces. And so what we need to do right now is go ahead and indent with a machinist punch and then we'll drill those holes and we're gonna do them about every two inches or so. So the end result should look something very similar to this. So we have starting an inch from each corner and each side, and then we go every two inches. And on this seam here, it's really close, but we want still that strength there. So now we're gonna go through all the corners and get this done. So now with our holes all drilled, what we wanna do is on the inside is just clean them up with like a Dremel or a small file. And just uh, the way we did the measurements for the holes is we measured the center point and then went two inches out for each hole. And just a quick tip is I made a little, another template out of cardboard. And since I was marking so many of the same lines, just made a end to end with the marks where I wanted that and then found the center point and drilled away. So now we'll clean these up and get all the markings off. Now what we wanna do is we want to put a brush finish to the aluminum just to give it a nice uh, look and feel. So what we're gonna do is just a red Scotch-Brite and then some WD-40 and we're just gonna, and most importantly too, is this grip stuff for uh, drawers. And just spray that, spray your Scotch-Brite, and you want to go in one direction and just go down, make a couple passes, make sure you get good coverage. Until you're happy with the finish. Let's take a look. That gives it a nice brushed look. So now we'll go through all of the parts and give them that finish. Now that we have everything brushed and the finish looks nice, what we want to do is set up the corner pieces to line up, so we're gonna go ahead and drill those and then get them all set up. So now we've finished our bottom piece and have that all riveted together and now we want to start working on the sides and we need to brush those and as well drill the holes that the power wires will go through.
All right, so we're almost done with the bottom part. We've put all of our pieces on, we've drilled our holes. And the one final thing I wanna do is just kind of dress up this front as this will be what will be seen in the trunk. And I'm gonna put a piece of trim, I'm gonna brush it, and then this will lay here and also hide that seam. And then put two rivets up the center instead of just the one. Um, then after that, we're gonna clean this really well and then put a, a clear coat on it just to protect it. All right, it's the next day. The clear coat has dried and it is looking awesome. So now what we need to do is work it on the top. And what we'll do is we've already got our corners cut. We have our hinge, we'll need that. And then we also have our top piece cut. And the important part here is that the top piece is gonna be slightly larger than the bottom piece we, we cut. And you want it to overhang just a little bit and you can adjust and fine tune it with your corner pieces. So now with the side pieces, at least these fronts we've riveted on, now you can obviously see where my measurements, I actually got a little too excited when I started cutting my pieces and cut these pieces too short, which also translated to these being too short. Live and learn. So what we're gonna do is, is where it works is that trim piece that if you remember, we did down the center of the box, that's gonna transpose up to the top and cover these. And then I'm gonna put these corner pieces, once I clean them up and make them look a little nicer, and then they will hide all those seams. So now we have our corners on and they look pretty good. They've hidden those seams. And uh, what we need to do now is this is going to be the cover that goes in the middle and I'll cover up these other seams. And I don't know if you'd noticed, but if you ever scuff or you know, you're drilling the holes or doing the rivets, you can always go back and grab your uh, Scotch-Brite pad and just go in the same uh, position as the strokes. And that way, if you did happen to make a mark in your brush, that you can fix that up. So now we're gonna go ahead and drill this, uh, brush it, and then do uh, two rivets down the side. All right, so we've got the lid pretty well laid out. Now we've got our corner pieces on, our center strap, and now what we wanna work on is putting in the hinge. And this is kind of the hardest part. Um, of course, we've left these rivets, and I actually took a couple of these placeholder rivets I made out um, just so I could line everything up the way I had it because this, this will effectively go in like so.
Through the magic of the internet, we have fixed or replaced our trim piece. And what we're gonna do is just line up these holes uh, into this top piece. These are about a half inch over, which lines up pretty close to center on our one inch um, trim piece. And just a note, when we're attaching the rivets to the hinge, we're using a, a rivet washer. So that helps with the, the slightly larger hole and gives a little bit stronger of a, a bite on the hinge. All right, so we have gone through and fixed the lid and how we like it and we attached it to the box so now we have a nice working hinge and so now what we want to do is we're going to put on some latches just to dress it up a little bit and to be able to lock it down and latches we're going to use is just a simple latch we'll put one on both of these sides and just rivet those in first we want to clean this lid and then we'll put these on and clean it one more time and then clear coat the lid. All right, the box looks awesome. And after the clear coat, what we did off camera was added some foam uh, insulation basically in that way. So when it is closed, we don't have any metal to metal uh, rattling while we're driving. Now, one thing we do need to add are the rubber gaskets that we cut holes for. And the Obviously, the two large ones are for the positive and negative terminals, and then the smaller one is for two things, is the vent, because we do need to vent this outside, uh, depending on the battery that we uh, use in the future. The one we have right now does need to be vented to atmosphere, uh, because we don't want those gases that can expel from the battery in the cabin of the car. And then also for accessories so if we wanted to add something uh, another power line to go to any accessories we'd want to run it through there last final thing is is we want to secure the battery inside the box so we don't want it sliding around we don't want it jumping up and down and so what we've made made a little strapping that will go across the battery and hold it down and then we're actually using the original uh, Datsun tie down bolt. Um, I've replated this, but that's going to go down to a little bracket we made that will sit at the bottom and then this will tighten onto that. So we're going to go ahead and put that together and then we'll wrap this up. So here's the finished product. Let's take a look inside. We went ahead and placed the strapping in so that looks all nice what's going to go here is the circuit breaker and we're going to do that on another video so make sure you tune in for that so thanks so much for watching if you like what you see don't forget to subscribe we're going to be working on installing this coming up next and then hopefully soon we'll get to that 260z but until next time have a good one Oh, 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 oh,